So we're talking today about chi-squared. It is a statistical test that tells us something about a p-value, a probability, according to something called the null hypothesis. So before we get into what all of that means, and again, statistics are just a tool for researchers, specifically biological researchers, to give some meaning to what we're looking at. We need to make um, some estimations of what all this data means to give us some path of whether or not there is a difference between uh, ex controls and experimental groups. So we've been down this road before and we've talked about at this point we've, we've left off with the standard error of the mean. So the standard error of the mean as we've talked about already is nothing more than a distribution of all the possible means or averages one could have given different pieces of the po true population. As I said before, if we had 300 birds on an island and we had a bunch of different researchers taking different numbers of those uh, different samples from the same population, these would be all the possible means. Most of the means would be close to the middle of the curve. Okay, and the standard deviation, okay, from this mean of all the means is what we call standard error of the mean. And it gives us, with one standard deviation, about 68% confidence that your what? Mean that you got is within 68% of all the other means that are possible from a population. That's something we've already covered. So these error bars that we see published in research data can help us give, help us understand whether or not if two different experimental groups have significance. These error bars tell us something about the confidence of our mean. So this could be the average of all the light seedlings and this is the mean of all the what dark and because we have high confidence with very small standard errors of the mean here there we're about that confident that's where we should be we're about that confident so we can clearly see that there is a what a difference or a gap between the standard error bars and we probably could say that this is telling us that there is some significant difference between these two groups and we've gotten to that point but you know what when you think about how big the gaps are when are these gaps too big or too small to give us significance we shouldn't be eyeballing and here's my eye uh, how much gap there is or isn't when are these two error bars really close and when does that start limiting the significance Okay, so we can't really look at just a gap between error bars to see if there is significance. We want some hardcore numbers to give us that. And that's what the chi-squared will help us get. It'll help us get something called a probability value. Okay, so let's continue what, what this means. So the last piece of whether or not two groups are significantly different would probably, the best way to look at that would be with an analysis that gives us something called a p-value. All right, so we want to determine significance. Just like our graphs below, uh, above here, we can see that there looks to be some level of significance because the error bars are small and there's a big gap in between. But again, we can't just look at this and say definitely true. Uh, these population sizes could be n equals what? Three and n equals a uh, thousand. So just because there's gap, you can look at maybe these samples have something to do with that. Or there could be what a good chance if you took a low what population size that would give us this mean. So there's a possibility, even though there there's a gap between these error bars, that that there is really no statistical difference. What that means is this difference could be just by chance alone. If I took a small sample of the seedlings, all right, a small sample, all right, like three, isn't there a chance it would give me a small average? Even with a standard of the mean, it could be small. Yeah, that could be, all right. And that chance alone would make what? It would make our difference 
look to be significant. So this test that we're getting into, chi-squared and p-values, they will tell us, okay, whether or not, at least it'll lead us to a better place in terms of whether or not there's a chance that there is no difference because our sample has some error in it, right? I could have chose some seedlings in the dark from my average that were a poor sample of the overall population that got me this small. So we want to see if in fact the differences have a real, real, real chance of being different outside the what? The chance. Okay, and I keep saying that chance. And it's a chance that our sample is poor. And I'll, I'll reiterate that. So we go below. We're talking about something called today the null hypothesis. Now the null hypothesis is telling me something. Null means zero. Zero hypothesis. And p-value. Now the p-value is going to tell me something in regards to whether or not there is significance. So if we think about this for a second, in every experiment there's an effect or difference between groups that researchers are testing. Okay? That's true. There is some effect or difference, okay? But we don't know if in fact it's significant. Unfortunately for the researchers, there's always the possibility there's no effect, even if the numbers show that there is. So there's a possibility there is absolutely no effect, that there is no difference between the groups, no matter what the numbers say. This lack of a difference is called the null hypothesis, which basically means that the null means zero, meaning there's no difference, there's no effect. So the null hypothesis in statistics means that when you're looking at two groups of number, there is zero difference between the two groups and any difference that you see is due to chance due to taking a sample that's probably too small or taking a sample that's not representative of the entire population so if you've got bean plants that have all varying different heights under the same conditions and you were to take just two of these samples that are the smallest your average would underestimate the entire population. So when I say sampling error, I really mean that we don't take a good representative. And there's always a piece of that. Anytime we take random samples of a population, there's always going to be some, some what, variance or variability of the true mean. Okay? Now, so the zero hypothesis just means that, hey, there is no difference. It's like a devil's advocate, always taking the negative. Hey, that glass is half empty. All right, always taking the negative side. So the null hypothesis is always the same. Get this in your head. It always means that there is no difference between the two groups. So if you look at our two data pieces above here, the null hypothesis would say, would say there is no difference between these groups and that any difference you see is due to a sampling error, due to chance of picking pieces of the population that are not representative of the true mean. So even though these error bars are too are small and there's a big gap, the null hypothesis would always mean that there is no difference here between these two groups. And any difference you see is clearly, or, or at least it means that it's diff, it, it differs because your populations aren't very good. There's some kind of chance here. Now if you don't quite still get that, let's continue. Okay, so as I move down here. So the null hypothesis and the p-value. Now what's the p-value mean? Well the p-value is going to give me a value of probability that the what? Null hypothesis is true. Meaning it's a, prob it's a probability that your numbers differ only by chance, only by chance error or sampling error. So let's take a look at two pieces of data here. Now the null hypothesis can also be accepted. At some point we're going to accept or reject the null hypothesis. Remember, the null of a zero hypothesis means there's no difference. Always means there's no difference. It's that negative person in the crowd. No matter what you research, it's like, hey, there's no difference. You messed up somewhere. Somewhere in the experiment, you took a bad sample. Somewhere, uh, just by chance, you're not getting what you should be getting. So the null hypothesis is always that negative kind of uh, bird or thought in your head or light bulb or, I don't know, um, 
any case, let's move on as I run out of metaphors for what it could be. So any case, so what we're saying here is that if you look at, and this is some, this is a study of alligators and how much of a um, enzyme activity they have. Notice the ACE at the end. And these are my males, right? And these are my females, different colors of gray, of course. Now, you can see that you may think, well, Okay, I took my male and females, and then I looked at the male and female at this lake, which, by the way, is um, highly contaminated. So this lake, Woodruff, has alligators that have no environmental problems, pristine, clear lake. And this lake, uh, Apoca, Apoca, I guess, is a lake with some, what, contaminated or uh, environmental problems. So we can look and see, is there a significance between the alligators in the what? Uh, nice, pristine, non-environmental uh, non type of problems in this lake where this lake has all kinds of pollution. So you can say, well, gosh, I see that mm, the females, they're significantly different in the clean lake with the dirty lake or comparing the clean lake females with the dirty lake females. Why? Because I see my error bars, there's a gap. I learn, hey, error bars, if there's a gap, there's, there's a significance. But is there? How much a significance? Remember, the statistics are just a tool for us. They don't tell us definites. So maybe it's nice to have a sliding scale, how significant difference that there is. And that's what the p-value does for us. The p-value gives me the probability that how much chance they are that this happened due to sampling error, okay, or in fact, how much it, it, it differs only because there's no effect. So the p-value is a measure of the null hypothesis, all right? If you have a high p-value, that means you have a high probability that the difference between these two females here and here is due not due to the lakes being different with different amounts of pollution, just because you took what? Poor samples. So the null hypothesis would state, being always the negative, that the difference between the females in this lake, the clean lake, and the females in this polluted lake, there is no difference. That's the null hypothesis. Any difference you see is due to chance of picking out only those what females that had a low oxid uh, low reductase activity so that's what that's what it's saying always there's no difference no hypothesis always the negative now we would like to have what we would like to have well how much significance what is the a number of probability that we could attain it tells me how strong or weak the null hypothesis is again larger the p-value the more probable your differences are due to random sampling errors or chance of, of not having a good solid sample. Okay, so that's what that's about. So let's so you can say that error bars are great to say that there's probable some significance, but a p-value, a number that tests whether or not this is significant, is a little better of is, is a lot better of a measure than just using what? our eyeballs to see if there's a gap, okay? Because again, that's misleading. The standard error of the mean will not give you a, a p-value to say, how probable is it that these two differ only by chance, okay? So let's continue down that road, all right? Now, again, as I said, a p-value is a measure of the what? Of the null hypothesis. So if the p-value is high enough, now what does this mean? Okay, this means, oh my, okay, this means if the, what, P is larger than 0.05, which means it's larger than 5%, the probability is larger than 5%, then your data has a high, prob the high probability that the differences you find between the two sets of data are just due to the samples that we're studying, okay? And we, in this case, would accept the null hypothesis here. And what would this mean? That there is what? There is no difference between the two groups above. 
Now, if the p-value is low, remember the p-value measures the probability of the null hypothesis being correct, okay? Which again, states that there's no difference. Your samples are bad. So the p-value is a measure of that. So if the p-value is low enough, and this 0.05 means lower than 5%, then your data has a low probability that the differences you find between the two sets of data are due to the samples. And this is the most important one. And the effects are due to other variables. So this would make us reject the null hypothesis. And reject, rejecting the null hypothesis would mean that there is a significant difference between the two. At least, it, I probably shouldn't say uh, definite. It just suggests that you have a more significant chance <laughs> that your differences are not due to sampling errors. We can never look at statistics and say, this tells us definite it's it's a definite or not it's not not black and white but what it does it gives me what greater uh strength that there is some what connection between the variables that we studied all right that's really important you can't look at these statistics and say oh it's black and white definitely is we can never do that all we can do is you know measure our significance because there's still a chance even if we reject a null hypothesis my friends in chemistry that our differences are still due to other things, okay, or other errors in the experiment. Absolutely, okay, so there's no home run here of definite, it's just another way for us to measure our uh, scale, I should say, our significance, if that makes sense, okay? It's a lot stronger than just looking at error bars. It gives us a value to wrap our heads around. So now we determine the significance. Well, if um, you look at these error bars, okay, notice, smaller the gap, okay, smaller the probability. Here's a probability is about 0.05, right? And what does that mean? That means that we have a 5% chance that the differences between these are due to sample errors or, or you know, small populations that we picked that are, that are not representative of the mean. How many times do I have to say that? I think I'm done saying that. But, uh, so anything what? Okay, anything smaller than this gap would be above the 5%, and we probably would say with there's low confidence that there could be. So you can see the gaps are something that you just can't eyeball, okay? So anything smaller than this gap between these two error bars and these points would give us something with a uh, high enough probability, higher than 0.05, which suggests that we accept the null hypothesis that these guys are not different. So how can you know this gap is big enough just by eyeballing it? You can't. It's a good way to get these p-values. Over here, the gap is big enough. Our p-value is way below 5, which means there's only a 1% chance that our differences between these is due to sample error. And you would accept, I mean, in this case, I'm sorry, you would reject, okay, the null hypothesis. Okay, very important you get that. All right, so again, eyeballing these gaps doesn't necessarily, it's knowing there's a gap between doesn't necessarily say that your p-value is small or big enough. You have to really, really try to measure your p. So in both cases, we would accept the null hypothesis because we get p-values at 5% or at 1%. All right, so that's important. But again, if this if these gaps were smaller, the p value be above five percent. That means there's a there's a greater chance. Now, why the five percent cutoff? Well, people like to live within the ninety five percent confidence range. Statistics, if you remember, if you have a standard deviation, ninety five percent is plus or minus two standard deviations. So that's where that comes from, all right? So uh, it's just the, the 2D deviation kind of area. So people are kind of in love with 95% confidence. The bottom line is they pick 5% as the cutoff. Does that still mean if, if we're less than or 5% or less with a p-value that our, 
probability is low enough that it can never ever be due to sampling error? No, you still might have something that is 0.01, 1%, and which to statistics means that's highly, highly non-probable that it's due to sampling errors, that your difference you got is due to the variables that you tested, but it never ever means definite, okay? That's important, okay? So this is uh, significant, at 5%, this is highly significant at 1%, but still both of them, although 1% is stronger, still doesn't mean definite yes or no. Okay, so how do we get these probability values, knowing now that that's really what we're after, not the space between, as David Matthews would say, between the two error bars. Yeah, did you know that space between he was talking about was the error bars? Yeah, he's a smart guy. Any case, we have a chi-square test. This has had a test, a statistical mathematical test Yep, that we generate to get a p-value. All right, so it's the best way to calculate the p-value instead of using the gaps between error bars and what we be talking about eyeballing here. So how do we do that? Well, um, first of all, understand chi-squared test is used for discrete data, not continuous. Discrete data is for uh, how many pea plants are green, how many are yellow, how many have red flowers or yellow flowers, these are discrete numbers. If you've got continuous numbers like height or weight, a t-test would be done to get these numbers as well. And some courses will have a t-test. In the AP biology world, we stick with chi-squared. Okay, so let's think of a study here where we're uh, flipping a coin, okay? And if you flip a coin, there's only two possibilities. There's heads, and there's tails. Notice those are two discrete areas. You don't have anything in between. It's not. Con these are definitely discrete numbers. So we would use a chi-square test. So when you flip a coin, assuming the coin is not fixed and it has a head side and a tail side, we know, party people, that when we flip a coin 25 times, we expect, um, I'm sorry, we flip, flip a coin 50 times, we expect 25 of the times for them to be heads and 25 to be tails. Now, when we did this experiment and we flipped a coin 50 times, we got 21 heads and 29 tails. What? How can it be different than expected? Maybe it's due to chance? Or is it? So, obviously, if you think about this, knowing anything about heads and tails and coins, and if we're dealing with a legal coin, that's perfectly balanced, then this is probably due to chance. But until we do a chi-square test, we can't be sure. What is the probability that the difference between these two values is significant or to chance? Well, we need to come up with a p-value. Well, a chi-squared helps us do that. So let's do that. What's the formula? Well, chi-squared, and this is given to you in your AP reference table, but it's equal to the summation of the observed minus the expected squared all over the expected. So how do we do this? Okay, well, let's take the observed. The observed is 21 minus 25. What do we get? Right? O minus E, observed minus expected. And I get negative 4. Now I'm going to square that. I get 16. Do the second line, all right? 29 is the observed. That's how many, we have 29 tails and 21 heads, minus the expected. We expect half to work. 29 minus 25 is plus four. We're gonna square that, we get 16. Notice the summation sign, all right? Notice the summation sign. So we're gonna sum these values. So we get 32. Okay, so this is my top line is 32. Now I'm going to divide by the expected. The expected is 25 because half of the 50 tosses or the 50 times I flipped a coin, because there's only two sides, I should have gotten 25. 32 divided by 25 is equal to 1.28, and we would say that our chi-squared is equal to that, and that's our chi-squared value. Okay, great. Now what do I do with that? Okay, it's not a very difficult um uh, calculation. Don't forget we're summing all the individual possibilities. Okay, well now I'm going to go to a table that's going to help me evaluate this. All right, 
and we go to a chi-squared table. Now, this is the table that's in your reference table. I want to go to a different table that is not first. So we have something called a critical values table, and this is what we need next once we have calculated our chi-squared value. Our chi-squared value is equal to 1.28. We've just calculated that. And we're going to use a critical values table. Now this table is a little different than the one in your AP table because it gives me different values of the p-value, of the p-score, that I think helps bring out understanding about all of this. So in any case, what I want to understand is the magic one we're looking for is 0.05. That means 5%. Anything that's have the p-value of 5% or lower, okay, is screaming to you that our p-value, of course, is low. And what does that mean? A p-value that's low mean there's a low probability that the null hypothesis is correct, and we can reject it. Now, let me explain that again, because it always seems weird to talk about that null hypothesis means that there is no difference. It's that negative idea that there's no difference between your, re your, your experimental and your control and that there was something wrong that made that happen or by chance. So if you've got a low p-value, if you're in this range for your p-values, then you can reject that because you have a low probability that there is a sample error or there's something wrong in your experiment. What it really means is there's a high probability that there is a difference all right now if you get what a probability in this area your p-values are going to be what your p-values are going to be high that means you have a high probability that the difference between your um, groups that you're studying will in fact be due to some sampling errors or chance errors in the case of flipping a coin of course we only have heads and tails and it's certainly the ch is just basically chance that there's differences, okay? Maybe we need a bigger, what, sample size to get a more accurate results. In any case, the point being is that we would accept the null hypothesis here with probabilities that are high. Do not forget, probability values is a measure of the null hypothesis. So when you have a high probability, that means there's a, there's a better chance that there is no effect. If you've got a low p-value, a low probability that there is no effect. So let's look at our value, 1.28. Okay, so 1.28, let's pick another color here, because you can. So 1.28 is going to give us where? Hmm, 1.28. Hmm, well, let's, before we can do that, we got to figure out our degrees of freedom. Okay, since we only have two choices that our experiment can become, heads or tail, we take our two possible uh, things and we minus one, just like we did with standard deviation or standard error of the mean. Okay, if you only have two possibilities and you already have tails, that means um, this tail only has could be only has one degree of freedom if the other one has to be tails or head. So we've talked about it, that at length. So we take our two possible outcomes minus one, and we have one degree of freedom. With our chi squared of 1.28 we can see that, that our value with one degree of freedom moves us right in here. Now, what does this mean? Well, 0.5 probability is 50%, 0.1 is 10%. So this means we have a probability between 50% and 10% that there is a chance that the difference between the two values is due to what? Just bad sampling or just by chance. That's a high p-value. When you have a high p-value, we accept the null hypothesis and there is no difference. So in the heads and tails um, study that we just did, by getting a, a chi-squared, okay, we can see that there was 25, um, I'm sorry, 21 heads and 29 tails the difference between them is not significant because we got a p-value that was greater than 5% or 0.05, right? The p-value is way too high, which means that there's a huge possibility that the difference is due to just chance or sampling error, okay? Now, if we use the AP bio table down here, okay, now notice 0.01 is going to be very 
significant and 0.05 is significant difference. Bottom line, these are p-values, but I like these other p-values showing us that. If I get 1.28, you can see that 1.28 doesn't fit below the 0.05. The 1.28 would be a p-value above. 3.84, notice 0.01 is 6.64. It's getting bigger. So we can see that here, not as nice as we can see here, that our value doesn't fit. So our p-value has to be big enough, bigger or equal to 3.84 to be within 5% or less, to have a low enough p-value to reject. So again, because it's less than the 3.84, which means a bigger p-value, bigger support of the null hypothesis, we reject on both. Both boxes would help us to do that. I like this one better because it gives you more of the p-values. Here they stop here. So you would need for this table to be what? Greater or equal to 3.4 to have a what? Large and um, um, a, a small enough p-value, okay, large enough what? Chi-squared value to give you, which would equal a smaller p-value that would allow you to reject the high problem. Small p-values, low chance the difference between two things is due to chance or sampling errors. Hope that helped.